Hello. I hope you're all good after lunch and feeling good, so uh, not too tired after the party yesterday. <laughs> anyway, um, this talk is about state of stack. Um, first question, who has heard about stack before? Well, I, may I just skip the introduction, I guess? <laughs> Let's see. Well, I'll do it anyway. It's uh, short. So uh, what is stack? First of all, this is the logo here. You can see it here. I don't have it on the slide. And it means uh, spatial temporal asset catalog. So that's a long form of stack. And it's a suite of specifications and software. Um, the specifications are two kinds, static stack, the stack specification, and an API specification. And it has a lot of uh, ecosystem around it. The stack specification itself describes geospatial data, um, which have usually also a temporal component, and that is described through interlinked static JSON files. So you put them, for example, on a cloud bucket, and then there are just JSON files that link to each other and in that kind uh, form a network that you can browse through. Um, the stack API specification adds dynamic elements to these static catalogs that you can deploy on cloud buckets. And then it adds, for example, search, aggregation, um, transaction, uh, everything that makes it dynamic in the end. The specification um, is extensible. Both parts are extensible. Um, there are various um, extensions that you can reuse. And uh, both specifications have also been submitted as an OGC community standard. It is going through that process right now. The question mark is there because it has not fully passed all uh, stages yet, but we are confident that this will uh, go through and uh, be a community standard in the end. Um, the current version is stack 1.0, and we are in the state of stack talk here. Um, what we are discussing here as well is what is actually new in the spec version 1.1. Uh, everything that is yellow on the slides is new since last POS4G uh, in uh, Kosovo, um, so that you have a feeling of what is, has changed and what is uh, already existing, was, or was existing before. Um, wait, how is it, does this work? Oh, yeah. So a catalog looks like this here, or could look like this, right? You always have an entry point, a catalog, and then you subdivide that into different uh, collections usually. Um, it, is, it is very open to, to do that. You could also like subdivide that into further subcatalogs and then have two subcollections there or so. Um, you end up always with item files usually that contain assets which are the actual data files that you uh, in the end want to read. And um, yeah, so what are these different entities? Um, first of all, a catalog is a very simple concept. It is uh, also only present in a uh, static uh, stack because there is no good way to otherwise like uh, subdivide these large files. Like if you have a collection with hundreds and thousands of files, that gets very large. So you want to subdivide that uh, usually. So if you, for example, want to expose Sentinel-2 level 2A data, then putting all these different granules that you have into a single collection may make sense, but that's like thousands of files. Um, that doesn't scale very well in JSON, so you would subdivide them, for example, into uh, folders or virtual folders and catalogs, um, for example, by specific days, right? So then you have catalogs for each day, um, and then it, it makes the entities that you expose in JSON much smaller. Uh, it's a bit comparable to what you have in APIs with pagination. Um, yeah. Collections are a little more uh, advanced in that sense that they add additional metadata for um, things like uh, data sets that are like, you usually like to try to expose homogeneous data sets where the properties are very similar to each other. So for example, Sentinel-2 level 2A would be one. And then, for example, the level 1C would be another uh, collection. Um, and you add the metadata there that describe the, the whole collection, like uh, keywords, extends, license, provider information, and so on. The item is then the, the last part of the uh, equation in the end. Um, there is where the data files, the individual captures of Sentinel-2, uh, for example, are described. Um, you specify the 
uh, date and time which it was captured at. Uh, you specify the location as a geometry in GeoJSON. Uh, you give all these additional information like the viewing angles, the projection information, and so on. Um, then you have assets in items and in collections which uh, point to the individual data files. So for example, if you have a center 2 capture and all the bands are individual uh, cloud-optimized geotiffs, then each of these files would be a specific asset. So a, the green band of center 2 capture as cock file is one asset and then the blue band would be a separate asset and so on. Um, yeah, these are meant for machine consumption usually. Um, that's what you would want to download on your computer in the end or, or use for uh, processing in the cloud. And then there are links which are really s relatively similar and present in all these entities and catalogs, collections and items and are usually more the like related resources that you usually may want to consume um, as a human or want to get additional information from are not necessarily needed for processing or, or download. Um, that could be documentation. That's also used to form the hierarchy between the different stack uh, entities, so links between catalogs, items, and collections. Exactly. So there are various extensions in the ecosystem. Um, for the static stack specification, that usually defines additional fields, like, for example, the projection information is an extension in the field. The uh, view incidence angle, for example, is a field, and so on. Um, there are 75 right now, I think, or 76, um, at least the, the ones that are listed in the official uh, table. And new ones are, for example, for accuracy information, altimetry, authentication is a recent addition which helps to like, tell the um, consumer which information or which pathway to go through or which steps to go through to actually authenticate and uh, then download the data. There is an extension that describes how to implement CIOs ARD requirements in stack. There is a domain specific extension for INSAR data. Um, machine learning was recently completely redone, uh, so to expose models. Um, and there is a new product extension which like describes product types and uh, timeliness and some th things like that. Stack 1.1 is on the horizon that's been worked on right now. Um, there will be additional fields in the so-called common metadata model. The common metadata model is something in Stack that um, is a central metadata model where you can like define fields that can be used in any of these entities that we saw before. Um, at the beginning um, of Stack, we often like just said, well, this can be used in items or this can be used in collections, and then we had these specifications very narrowly, and then people said, oh, I want to use it somewhere else, and then um, we pretty much uh, came up with this common metadata model, so all these fields can be used anywhere, um, which means, for example, that now if you, before you could also use keywords in the collections, now you can use also or assign keywords to items, you can assign keywords to assets, you can assign keywords to links and use them for search or whatever. The roles have been uh, made more uh, generic before they were only in assets, now you can, for example, assign more roles to links so that you can clearly identify what uh, purpose they have. There was an uh, effort to align further with OGC API records um, that uh, led to a change in the license field, for example. Um, and uh, the actual change there is that beforehand we had two values that could be put there in addition to SPDX license identifiers, what's, which were uh, proprietary and various. Um, proprietary was not very uh, well received in the community because even for um, open data, you had to use that if there was no SPDX license identifier and that gave wrong impression of what it actually is. Um, so now everything is just using other and you put a link to your uh, information, link, li link, uh, license information and then you can just get it from there. Um, one minor thing that we had in the links is that you could only get uh, links with via a GET request, so it's very normal links in the HTTP where you, where you click a link and then it requests it, um, but there are other things that you may want to view, like post requests for sending larger information, send headers with authentication details, uh, etc. So that can be now expressed in links. Uh, if you, you do want to use that, um, that is especially helpful like for transactions or something like that for pagination. Um, there is now an implicit inheritance between item properties and asset properties. So that means that you um, don't need to uh, repeat all the information in the assets all the time. 
Um, you can just put them in the item properties and then the clients, if they don't find any information in the asset, they go one level up and find them there. Um, that should help with deduplicating data in the uh, metadata. There's a little more um, in the in the change log which you can uh, um, go through if you will click the link here and that, that is titled and much more. Um, yeah. uh, the biggest change in stack 1.1 which I didn't uh, uh, said anything about yet is the bands. That is the main uh, driver of stack 1.1 actually. Uh, and that is uh, removing a historical thing that we um, yeah, got in stack due to how it just worked out. Um, there was the EO extension and the Rasta extension which both, both had an array construct which was called, uh, or it identified feel, uh, bands. Um, so for example, you could have EO bands with a name um, and, and the wavelength. And then in Rasta bands, there was no name for the bands because it was already uh, in EO bands, but in the end you ended up with two array structures that you needed to uh, look through to get all the information. So now it's um, called just bands and it is in the stack core specification. And the extensions actually just add fields to it that uh, can be used specifically for these um, different extensions like the, the wavelength, for example, which is specific to spectral info, like bands is in the EO extension and raster specific fields like the spatial resolution are in the raster extension. Um, that also allows that you if you just have a single band, you actually don't need to use a band extension because you can use these fields due to the common metadata model again outside of bands and just use them in assets, for example. Um, that also like makes the whole construct a little simpler. And to make this a little more transparent, let's look at an example here. So before, you had EO bands, right, and raster bands. Two different arrays, but they describe the same band in the end. You had the name in EO bands, the description, the common name for the spectral band, the wavelength and the full width half max. But then you had at the same level and you needed to identify it, whoop, that via the array index pretty much, like the first uh, array element were parallel to the other first element in the raster bands. Uh, that was relatively difficult and just like was not very intuitive. Um, the new thing is now you have a single array with band construct. Uh, some of the fields are in, in the core, like name, description, data type, no data, statistics. These are all here. You could don't need to prefix them anymore. And then you have um, some fields that are EO or spectral related and raster related that have a prefix here. So there was a direct mapping, you can pretty much just rename them, like data type goes in as it is. Um, spatial resolution has a raster prefix, raster double uh, colon spatial resolution. And that's pretty much it. So it's more or less unifying the arrays and renaming the fields and that's it. Um, it hopefully makes implementation simpler um, and allows to express bands in various ways. You can reuse them in other extensions as well. The Stack API specification itself um, is a, well, API that is HTTP based, uh, JSON based, based on OGC API features um, and defines in the core just the landing page and then adds item search on top and collection features um, based on OGC API features. So that's the same endpoints. The difference here is that um, pretty much in OGC API features, the geometries that you get are the actual data that you want to retrieve. And in stack, the geometries that you get via the items endpoint are metadata about the actual data files. So that's uh, the main difference there. API as well is extensible, it has various um, extensions that you can reuse, also submitted as community standard. And um, we're also working on a new version there, which might be 101 or 11, depending on which changes get in. Um, but that waits for stack 1.1 and then afterwards stack API will be updated. The API extensions, um, there are 15, I think right now, or maybe 16. Um, the new ones that are there are um, very collection related, like the focus in stacks before was more on item search, uh, but now there is like collection search as well, there is collection transactions. So transactions means you can update via an HTTP API the collections to something new, change the keywords, change the description or the title or something like that. And then free text search was added also based on OGC API records, um, which you can use to just freely search uh, in any text through the, through the API. Um, we're waiting for further changes in OGC APIs and um, like really 
if, yeah, we wait that they release the, uh, the, the like CQL2 and transactions into the final like stable state and then we follow that and just adopt that as well. Um, so they, these are not like identified as stable right now but will be in the future once that is um, true in OGC. Um, various new tools in the ecosystem. I didn't knew people were still using ASP.NET, but there is now a stack tool in ASP uh, for ASP.NET. Welcome, but uh, I'm not sure how many people are going to use that. Um, there is a new Rust client similar to PyStack, um, PG Stack, uh, PG Stack RS, or is it called? No, it should be PyStack RS. I think that's a typo. There are Yulia-based clients for the Yulia community that is growing, StackJL and StackCubeJL. Our stack that was previously an API client only is now available in version 1.0 and can read and create uh, static stack catalogs as well. In the JavaScript ecosystem, we have a new version of Stack Browser, which, for example, implements authentication. So before and you had to had a fully free um, public accessible catalog. Um, that is now not the case anymore. You can, for example, authenticate through OpenID Connect. There is OL Stack, which is like a, a mapping a, a plugin for open layers that uh, can render easily the, the stack elements that you throw at them. And StackJS as a um, simpler, simple helper, drop-in replacement if you are handling stack entities in JavaScript. Um, there is a new tool to simplify the downloading of stack assets in Python. Beforehand, it was a little bit difficult to get the data actually to your computer um, through PyStack it's itself. Um, that is now simplified through this uh, command line tool. PyStack 1.1 simplifies uh, how you can interact with extensions. That might uh, help some people because beforehand it was a bit, little bit difficult. It also will implement the bands, changes already, um, and so on. Uh, Stackfast API has been updated. There is a new backend. Before I did, I think, Elasticsearch and P PostgreSQL, uh, PG Stack. Um, you can now use MongoDB if that's your uh, backend of choice. And Stack Task is, uh, is a new tool that like is meant to uh, run algorithms effectively over uh, a large uh, set of, of data sets. For more, see Stack Index. Um, we have a long list of tools there that you can use. Um, for data sets, um, just an extract of, of uh, new data sets that were, that were added and made available in Stack. I'll uh, not go through there, just go through them in Stack Index and see whether there is anything uh, of interest for you. A little bit of uh, timeline here. So we started Stack 1.0 in 2017, uh, went through release Stack 1.0 in 2021. Um, and the new versions, uh, Stack 1.1, are really, uh, meant to be released in quarter two of 2024 um, and followed after in hopefully quarter four um, of 2024, uh, we will have Stack API updated, hopefully. Um, yeah, what the, will be the plan for the future in Stack? Well, we discussed Stack 1.1 and Stack API updates. Um, then, of course, after those have been released, um, we will update or try to update the ecosystem as much as possible to the latest specification versions. Um, due to the low number of changes, uh, I think mostly uh, updating the bands, uh, related things, everything else should be relatively smoothly. There should not be a lot of breaking things in there, I think, uh, ideally none. Um, yeah, and then we wait for OGC to release the uh, other specifications that we uh, base our uh, API extensions on. And then, uh, yeah, there is currently, because all stack sprints before were in the US, there is our plans to host a stack sprint in Europe. Who's interested? Let us know. Um, we would love to do that uh, end of the year or beginning of next year um, to have something here in Europe for, for stack uh, interested people. Uh, the PSC will be a bit uh, updated to or and be more inclusive. That has have been like five core contributors in the past, but we will open that in the future and see which role actually we take there and how we can further stabilize uh, stack to make it more uh, like well governed, let's say. And then, of course, there is the OGC community standard that hopefully will be soon be uh, a thing. A couple of resources that if you like uh, download the slides from the fosc 4 g website that you can click and go through. Um, I will, or I want to welcome everyone to the Stack Community Calls if you're interested. That's every second Monday 
at 5 p.m. Central European time, uh, 18 o'clock uh, Estonian time. Um, if you want to join that, uh, there is a link to the Google group. If you join that, then you'll get an invite um, to your email. And then uh, I would like to, or I would be happy to see you there. Thanks. I have a question. Um, what's the status of the stack item collection spec? Uh, it was pulled out of the 1.0 1 uh, release. Is it going to be added back in at 1.1? Uh, I mean, the item collection spec is part of the API specification. Um, there is a fragment that we point to now in the stack specification as well, but it's not part of the core stack static specification, of course. Um, so we just point to it in the stack API specification, make it more visible so that users can actually see it um, and find it if they look for it in the wrong place, which is, I mean, it's hard to navigate all the repositories. Um, there is now also a collection collection, which is pretty much the equivalent for the item collection for collections. Uh, so the item collection is a list of collection uh, of items, uh, pretty much a GeoJSON feature collection, and the collection collection is the equivalent. Um, they will both live in the item, uh, in the Stack API extension and uh, be part of that release cycle, yeah. It just, you can't validate the item collection because it's not part of the spec, so the, it's only part of the API, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it should be validated through the API validator, right? But I, it might not do that right now. I'm not so uh, into the API validator, yeah. Thanks. Other questions? so much, both of you. Um, I've, with any standard um, or specification, uh, what's the estimation? I mean, are we going to add and add new fields and more, more things? Um, and it will, again, become just so big that somebody wants to, a more lightweight specification? <laughs> just asking. Yeah, that's, of course, a risk that uh, may happen if you have extensive specifications. Um, we try to look after that a bit um, and try to uh, at least make it so that there are not like three different extensions for SAR or three different extensions for EO that pe different people come up with, right? Um, that's one thing, of course, to do. But otherwise, I mean, it, as it's extensive and everyone can do what they want, you can't really limit that um, from the top. I mean, that's a, the difference from like if, if you write specifications. Uh, top down, then you can just say that's it, and then you're limited by it. If you write them bottom up, then you can just put everything in there. It allows everything, but then of course it may make uh, it very complex in the end to support. There is a goal right now to do something like profiles of extensions, so that you can um, like have best practices of like if you have like spectral like central two data, right? that they recommend, like, you should implement extensions A, B, C, and D, right? Um, and then it, it hopefully guides users towards the right extensions and helps, like, to avoid the proliferation a bit. More questions? Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, you. there was another question. <laughs> uh, from experience from the field, so to say, uh, will the stack API be, be more um, prevalent than, than static uh, stack JSON catalogs, or uh, is it still okay to use static JSON catalogs? It depends a bit on the use case. Um, yeah. The larger the static catalogs are, the harder it's, it, it is to go through them and find the corresponding data, right? So, because it, there is no search on, on top of that. Um, but it's totally fine to have static catalogs in, in cloud buckets if that's the easiest way to expose it. Um, do it. It's, it's better than having nothing, right? Um, that's, that's the way to go. And then it might just be that also others just index the data into an API if they find it useful. Um, it at least gives the, the common layer of, of like the common language. Um, and then people can do whatever they want with it in the end. That, I mean, yeah. Uh, 
uh, thank you for the, the presentation. So oh, I wonder what's the stack community position regarding validators? I mean, I, I, I saw there are some validators uh, uh, referenced. Are they in a way um, evaluated? Uh, are there some validators that are, that are considered official? How do you manage uh, the quality of the validators? Thank you. That's a, that's a pretty good question and actually something that uh, people need to be aware of. Um, Stack is a little differently written to OGC standards where there are a lot of like requirements and recommendations listed that you can like go through one by one and check in test suits. Um, Stack validation primarily relies on JSON schema uh, and you can't check everything in JSON schema that we have expressed in the, um, in the specification. So if you validate using one of the tools, then it just goes through the JSON schemas and checks things. Um, but if it says it's valid, it may actually not be valid still because there are some things that are not checked. So that's a bit misleading, of course. Um, it's more like the validators are actually more a tool to figure out what is wrong rather than whether it's completely valid. <laughs> um, but there is no official validator as such. Um, there are, I think there is one in Node, one in Python. That's the primary ones to use. Um, the, there is one in, in the, the Python one has one additional tool that is called Stack Check, which does do a bit of additional like best practice checking in the background as well. Um, but there is no like like a test suite as an OGC that like makes it that or checks for full compliance uh, right now. That would be something that is, I guess, valuable. But then, of course, where do you stop? If you start that for all the extensions, then you have quite a long way to go. <laughs> OK, I think we have to cut it off there, because it's time to switch over. Thank you. <laughs>